Hello everyone, thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Ordinarily, a video pertaining to Clear Lakes 44 would be another update and analysis in a long line of similar videos, but I'm afraid the series has recently taken a very unexpected turn. I didn't anticipate making a video like this, let alone even put thought to the possibility of needing to, but due to the need for everyone to be aware of the series' current status, it should be addressed in video form for those who haven't heard already through Twitter and Tumblr. Clear Lakes 44 is cancelled. As far as the current run that we've seen goes, on April 8th, Troy, the founding member of THAC, posted a full transparency piece on the story behind Tim and Joseph's departure from the team a while back, which was approved for publication by Tim and Joseph. Two days after, a follow-up message was posted by Troy announcing the current state of THAC and its projects. THAC, which stands for Troy Has a Camera, was the production crew behind Marble Hornets, a good amount of comedy skits on a separate channel, and Clear Legs 44. During the making of Marble Hornets, Thack was made up of Troy, Joseph, and Tim. After the finale of the series, a new member was hired named Noah, who we've seen in Clear Lakes 44 as the character of Birdwatcher. The departure of Tim and Joseph in early November left Troy and Noah as the sole members of Thack until recently when Troy made two announcements. The first being about why Tim and Joseph left, and the second about Noah's departure from the team as well. This was a respectful and amicable split between the two, but nonetheless left Troy as the sole member of Thack. In addition to the announcement of Noah's departure, Troy stated, Clear Lakes 44, as it exists right now, is ceasing production too. I say as it exists right now because it's not being cancelled completely. I will be rebooting and relaunching it as a new series written and produced by me. I will leave the current version of CL44 up on the Marble Hornets channel for a few weeks before setting them to enlisted and re-uploading them to a separate channel. I will post links to them on the THAC forums once that happens. After thinking on it for quite a while, I'm not confident that the current story of CL44 would live up to the high bar that Joseph, Tim, and I were able to set with Marble Hornets. It's always difficult and disappointing to take a step back and be able to admit when something is not working for you, and this is definitely not a decision I took lightly. I think starting over and getting back to what the original idea was and working from there in a different direction will ultimately lead to a better experience throughout the life of the series. It will take some time, but I will keep you updated on the entire process. Now the purpose of this video is to spread awareness to those following Clear Lakes 44 who did not receive the news as I know it only spread through Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook, while the majority of viewers are on YouTube. We won't be getting into the details of the split as that is the personal business of the former members of THAC, but as it now stands, Clear Lakes 44 is cancelled. It may be revived in the future in a new direction and maybe even under another name. Time alone will tell. In the wake of the cancellation, I did invite our community on Twitter and Tumblr to send in questions for a wrap-up discussion on Clear Lakes 44. Though the circumstances around the cancellation are a bit tragic, hopefully we can make some good of all of this. Are there any do's and don'ts that you believe might prevent what happened to the Thack Boys regarding the cancellation and reboot of CL44, among others? Basically, how do you think that a sudden end to a web series like that could be prevented? This is a very good question to lead into our discussion. As many of you know, I'm always pushing to see new creators come onto the scene, thrive, and succeed. A new Thack, a new Everyman hybrid team, another Tribe 12. I want to see more regular people with great ideas bring them to life and make a living doing what they love and becoming the big creative names of tomorrow. If we want web series, alternate reality games, and internet storytelling in general to succeed past the point of being a flash in the pan, we've got to treat every occurrence like this as an important lesson to study and learn from. I want to see a new web series become the next Marble Hornets. Hell, I want someone to come along and make something even bigger than that. But I don't want to see the same thing that happened to Thack happen to those future creators. If we can talk about ways to make sure of it now, it's something that we must do. To answer your question, I believe that there are a few things that could have been done to prevent this, mainly having to do with prevention as a policy. Some of the circumstances around the split have a lot to do with business, while other factors are more in line with the inclusion of new faces. Anytime new people are added to the mix, there have to be plans to accommodate them without injury to the project or team. When pursuing any venture at all in the field of self-employment, especially creative self-employment which can be so risky to depend on, the first move before taking on any decision that involves money or time is judging whether or not there is an overabundance to comfortably give away. Point blank. If you can't add another human being to your life that requires your money and time without feeling the stress of running low on either of those supplies, it's in your best interest to avoid doing it. Playing it safe with money, time, and energy is the best way to prevent disasters. If the thought of splitting these resources with someone else worries you even slightly, keep on building until you arrive at the stage where writing a check doesn't even make you blink. 
When a project like a web series comes to the point of being a business such as Thack did, objective business decisions to defend and protect that business at all costs are an everyday ordeal. Besides the issue of adding new people and whether or not you have the ability to do so without putting strain on resources, any group that comes together to make something must operate as a unit. In the case of Thack, as Troy described it, he, Tim, and Joseph were all supposed to be bosses on an equal level, but that policy wasn't upheld and decisions that came down to majority votes were not put into action. Tim and Joseph were often overruled in their decisions by paperwork that put Troy in the seat of authority, even though a verbal agreement existed about all three being on equal terms. The lack of a fully formed team decision on things is evident from the first run of Clear Lakes 44. As Troy puts it, Clear Lake suffered the most because there was a fairly large number of creative differences between all of us on what the follow-up to Marble Hornets should be. These differences kept going even by the time Joseph and Tim left. We were never fully on board as a whole, which caused the beginning of CL44 to be a stumble instead of the big bang that we wanted. When you come together with people to make things, you establish the roles, responsibilities, and ultimate power of each person over creative decisions and direction. If you're a team and each person has equal say in authority, you work it out as a team with majority ruling. If you're a leader with a crew of people you brought on, you hold meetings with them and direct the flow of the project. But no matter what, the end result must be a completely uniform knowledge among everyone of what's being made, what direction it's going in, and how it's going to be done. The lack of all of this led the current run of CL44 to be a stumble instead of a big bang as Troy already expressed. So, to recap, when it comes to preventing what happened to Thack, anyone involved in a creative project must be working in a group where the roles, responsibilities, and power of decision are completely outlined and agreed upon. In addition to that, when money comes into the picture and you think about adding someone, ask yourself this. Can we afford another person's existence without endangering the resources of the team and my co-workers? If the answer is no, then I do advise not performing the action that will lead to that extra human being. On the topic of CL44 and Thack, how closely did you follow Thack, its content, and its creators outside of Marble Hornets and CL44? Were or are you saddened by the news of what went down and how things are now? As a longtime fan of Thack, their channel, podcasts, and the creators themselves, I know the whole thing really hit me hard when Tim and Joseph first left, and even more so now. When it comes to Thack, I followed everything. I've been a fan since 2011 when I first discovered Marble Hornets. I've been a Patreon supporter, I've been a subscriber to the Thack channel where they uploaded skits and vlogs, I listened to the Ben Witsy podcast, I've always been a fan of their work. I am saddened by the events that have transpired. It's not fun to see a group of guys obtain the dream, live in it, and then collapse as they unveil their sequel project. I was personally so excited when Clear Lakes 44 was announced, and when so much of it began happening just as I was wrapping up the Marble Hornets Explained series? That was fantastic! I was ready to broadcast more exposure for Thack and Clear Lakes 44 everywhere I could as a fan and supporter. But as we've seen, things didn't turn out that way for reasons that none of us anticipated. Where do you see CL44 going from here, if anywhere at all? Troy said in his post that he's going to be taking some time from creating new media to decompress and just sort things out. I expect if anything new happens, it's going to be a while, and I'd rather that it does take a while to happen. Everyone involved in Thack's split has suffered, and they all need their time to heal and sort things out. It's going to be quite a few months before we see Clear Lakes 44 again, I think, if it even goes by that name when it reappears. I'm not even entirely sure if we will see it again. With Troy being the father of an infant and a married man, he's in a position now where steady financial support of his family takes top priority. He may find with steady work and raising his child that there's no room for making a new series. If so, that's fine. He has his responsibilities to tend to, and I think everyone would rather see him healthy, happy, and making income he can rely on than worrying about making videos. If he does come back with something, it will be very interesting to see how it turns out. We know from what's been shared that Clear Lakes 44 didn't really have a solid direction, with no one able to really determine what it should be. I know it's far too early to tell now, but do you think Troy will be able to make CL44 better than how it is currently since he said he wasn't 100% happy with it? Troy was responsible for pretty much all of To The Ark's videos, and he is still known as a founder and main character from Marble Hornets. It may take some time, but I believe he can absolutely come back and make something strong we can all enjoy. It's going to be difficult if he can't pull anyone else into the fold to assist free of charge, but one-man operations can work very well. Clear Lakes 44 question. How do you think not having the original people on board for the project will affect it, i.e. Tim, Joseph, etc.? 
I suspect that we'll be seeing a lot more of a lean into David Lynch territory, as Troy has described Lynch's work as an inspiration, and Clear Lakes 44 did seem to be picking up some of that vibe. In any case, with one writer and director, we'll be seeing a much more cohesive narrative, I believe. Is there anything in particular you hope Troy slash that carries over from the old CL44 into the new series? Anything as inventive as a living camera approach like the one we saw is totally welcome. I was also very excited about the prospect of a local TV station as the focus of surreal and mysterious events when Clear Lakes 44 was first being teased. I'm guessing it will be somewhat difficult to answer questions considering little to nothing has been answered in the short runtime CL44 has had, but what's your opinion on the symbolism of birds and any personal theories on how the camera works in the series, like how it can hover and see through the eyes of characters? With so many different hands in the pot guiding different ideas about the series, and so little information to tie together pieces that we do have, I don't think it's possible to thoroughly answer either of those questions. I was waiting for more footage to begin utilizing clues and ideas, but anything I could say now would be pure speculation and free thought. Do you actually want a Clear Lakes 44 slash Marble Hornets follow-up series? If this was all left alone and no other series gets created, could you live with that? I can live with whatever decision that Troy makes that works to the best outcome for his family. It would be great to see him back making things with a strong audience and an all-around return to success online, but his responsibilities to his wife and daughter do come first. For the Clear Lakes 44 video, do you think they'll spell out any connection to Marble Hornets from the get-go or keep it ambiguous? It seemed like the ambiguity kind of pissed some people off the first time rather than creating an atmosphere. I honestly don't mind at all if whatever Clear Lakes comes back as has anything to do with Marble Hornets. An independent story would be just as welcome. It really doesn't have to tie into the original series. If Troy does take the approach of linking it back to Marble Hornets, I'd like to see it handled in a way where we get pieces of information at a time that build to a final moment where we all understand the connection. And I believe that's all there really is to say about the subject. The ending to Clear Lakes 44 is unfortunate, but the events that brought it about are far more disappointing to learn. I believe that Troy can get back up on his feet and return to a successful online career in the near future if he so chooses. Noah will be fine as his acquisition came from a broad skill set that he regularly seems to receive work for. Tim and Joseph, from all appearances, are also going to be alright. Thack as we've known it is dissolved and Clear Lakes 44 with it, but with hope we may receive something just as good if not better in the future. I think we can all make some good out of this now by learning from the events as they've been relayed to us and applying the knowledge ahead of time for future projects. The team behind Marble Hornets may be disbanded, but there's no putting a stop to the web series popularity push they created if we keep the train rolling. That's all for tonight everyone. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Thank you, and sleep tight.